Hello everyone, so based on some requests from the comments, people wanted me to do a little bit more in-depth a video of how to set up your Aver Media equipment with uh, Streamlabs OBS while adding some elements, so I thought I'd do that for you guys. So let's start off by opening up Streamlabs, which you can tell I've already done. And if you haven't already played around with it, this is basically what you should see on the start. You won't see any sources, you might have some stuff in the mixer section, um, and you'll have one demo scene collection, okay? So it'll be just called Scene but uh, I've already renamed it to demo just simply for the purposes of this video. Um, and so yeah, so you'd start off with your scene collection and you can see here I have different scene collections depending on which game I'm playing. So I have a scene collection for Call of Duty, a scene collection for Smash Bros, a scene collector for Street Fighter. And we'll get into it later on as to why a scene collection is important. But for now, we'll have one scene, we'll name it demo and we'll start adding sources. So to begin with, obviously the most important part typically is the video capture device. Uh, so we'll start with that. And then for those of you who are only here for how the heck do you get the video capture portion to work correctly, you can leave right after this. All right, so to start off, we wanna make sure we pick the correct one. And you'll notice that there's two here. If you don't see two, make sure that you go to the Aver Media website and download the correct drivers and the correct software to have these installed because this here, this one here, the shorter of the two, is the Windows default drivers. And as you can see, it creates a four by three image. The quality would be super low if we then blew it up to fit this actual screen here. And so yeah, you definitely do not wanna use those. You wanna use Aver Media's actual drivers, which then creates an image, which you can already tell is much larger than my display space, which means the quality of the video should be really good uh, once fitted correctly, which we'll do in a second. The second thing you want to do is make sure you come down all the way to the bottom here. It says use custom audio device. So click that tick box and scroll down again and make sure you uh, choose the right audio device. So there's two, again, four different ones this time for Aver Media. You have a line in uh, Windows driver, a line in Aver Media driver. You have a digital audio interface Windows driver and the Aver Media digital audio interface driver. For this, for this specific instance, we're going to select the digital audio interface one because that is where our signal is coming from, which is the HDMI cable. So we'll select that, hit done. And now you can see here, our video capture device is actually creating some sort of audio. And we'll fix the screen here by hitting transform and fit to screen. All right, so now our actual image fits to the screen and we can see where our gameplay is going to sit within that. So now we want to actually add some elements. So elements can be stuff like alert boxes, follower goals, event lists, so on and so forth. Um, and these all can be important pieces to your stream, depending on how you like to lay it out and depending on what kind of information you'd like people to know about you or your stream itself or otherwise. So let's start out by adding an alert box because this is something that almost everyone will have. Hit add source, we'll keep its name as alert box. All right, and this is the screen you're displayed with. From the get-go, you can choose which uh, alerts you would like to get. I don't think bits are all that important. I don't own a merch store. Uh, hosts and raids are fun, so why not? And that'll generate which ones you'll actually get when you create this, me this message. So when I hit test widgets and I hit follow, It'll pop up, Fraggle Rocker is now following you, okay? And this is the symbol I've chosen. I've downloaded this custom from somewhere else. So while, when I hit the layout buttons, it doesn't change the layout, but the default layouts will actually change depending on which format you want. Uh, personally, I prefer the middle one, but again, mine's custom, so it doesn't really matter because it just is what it is. Um, there's obviously some moderator tools here and a source tool. The source tool is how I actually gained this uh, this one specifically, and you guys can learn how to do that on another time or another day when you get more advanced. Um, so yeah, so let's add that, hit OK, and you'll, you'll be presented with this massive box. So if I go down here and test widget, see it pops up, covers almost my whole screen. Um, and so for me, this is not somewhere where I would like to have this. Instead, I'd like to have it resized and maybe put in the corner out of the way where I'll still know it's happening, but it won't distract anybody on the stream who's trying to watch the main gameplay in the middle. Uh, so that's an alert box. We also have the capture device. Let's lock both of those so we can't mess around with them. And then let's add something else. How about we add a follower goal, All right? So we're gonna hit add source, call it follower goal. And here you can see my current goal. Uh, this was set you know, a couple weeks ago. So I'm actually gonna hit end goal and I'll 
it'll guide you guys through how to make one of these. So if this is your first goal, this is what you'll be presented with. You'll have to add a title. So let's say new friends, please. Uh, my goal amount is, let's say, 50, fo 50 followers, and my starting amount is 22. The starting amount is important to know when you're first setting your goal, but after that, not important at all. The reason being is that the Streamlabs OBS software will track whenever you've been followed and will actually add one to this starting amount ticker. Uh, so if you started this at zero, but you had 22 followers and someone followed you, it would just say one, it wouldn't say 23. So make sure you start it at the number that you're currently sitting at so that it, it, uh, it follows correctly. And then you actually have to give it an end date. So let's just say we'll give it, we're gonna give it the end date of Valentine's Day. All right, we could change around with the, the visual properties. There's a standard version and a condensed version. Um, so the standard version will actually show you a little bit more. My sample goal, you know, it's obviously a sample. Uh, and it tells you how many days left you have to making that goal and how many current people are you have to that goal and what your percentage towards the goal is. And then there's also the condensed version. The condensed version just says, you know, my goal, 36 people out of 48, doesn't really tell you how many days are left, but it's just a little bit uh, smaller. So I actually prefer this one, just personal preference, because I can actually resize it and get it out of the way somewhere where I don't really care about it too much. Uh, so we'll resize it a little bit. And then that would be your sample goals. Now, of course, that could go anywhere. It doesn't have to particularly be there. Um, I hate blank space and boxes, even though it doesn't make a difference. So I'll just show you quickly how to get rid of those. Uh, we go edit transform and we start cropping from the bottom. Okay, that's a lot of pixels. So I'm just gonna go for a guess here. And it's flipped horizontally on me. Uh, go 150 and then I will just rotate that until it's back on the screen again. And as you can see, I've now gotten rid of all that garbage space. All right, so that's a, we've got now a follower goal on there. Um, we also have our alert box and our video capture. For some reason, my follow goal didn't set. So let's just quickly go into the properties and see why. Ah, I didn't hit save. So uh, new friends, please. We're gonna go for 50 people starting at 22. Uh, we're going Valentine's Day here on this one. And we hit start goal. And now that should actually update. So when we actually go back to the screen, we now see new, New friends, please, 22 out of 50. All right. Now, uh, we're going to add one more thing. And I, I th uh, just quickly show you, we're going to add an event list. Okay. Um, an event list actually gives your audience an idea of who did what last. And again, you pick how you want those. So do you want follow, subscriptions, show resubs? Uh, again, I took bits off. Uh, we can add raids back in. Doesn't matter. Uh, we have the font settings and visual settings here. Um, down here, you can actually change how many max events show up on the screen. So if you want 10 events at one time, and this will take two seconds to update. Oh, no, it doesn't want to do it for me. Come on, invalid index code for background color. Oh, that's weird. Never seen that error message before, and I didn't even touch the background colors. Uh, oh, there we go. We just do this, boom. All right, fix that problem quickly, and let's go back into the properties and muck around. So if we do this and increase the amount of people, it should now show 10. Yep, it shows 10. If we go into visual settings, we can actually, uh, you know, do different types of animations. So this one will flash. That's kind of annoying. Let's rubber band. And it stretches. That's also really annoying. Um, I don't know many of these that are actually something that I like, but let's see what this is. Eh, that one's not bad. It's probably something I would pick. Um, personally, because I like to have things shrunk down and condensed, I like to only have, oops, max event. I only like to have one person. Um, that way I can, you know, uh, really mess around with the size of this. So again, resize it and get rid of that blank space, which drives me bananas. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna take a guess here at 500 pixels. Oh, perfect, dead on. Uh, we'll rotate that back and uh, resize it a bit and there we go now we have a now we have an event list in the corner um, one more thing to show you guys quickly is a lot of people what they'll do is overlay things that are uh, with like their uh, follow their uh, sorry their alert box so with this event list uh, maybe i want it here we get this alert box we'll unlock it so i can move it around all right and we place it right over top 
Um, the reason I'm showing you guys this is because there's one important concept you need to know about the source list, and that's uh, depending on who's at the top of the source list depends on who's at the top layer of your video, right? So right now, if I hit follow, you'll see my uh, my alert box pops up behind my event list. Okay, that's not very useful. I can't really see it. So what I got to do is just click and drag that up there. And now when I hit it, you'll see it overlays on top. Okay. Um, the reason I'm showing you that is because for me personally, I like to have my webcam maybe somewhere over here. And then I just put the alert box over top of my webcam so it doesn't take up excess space. Um, and then also doesn't distract from the game. All right. So last thing, why is it important to have scene collections? Well, scene collections allow you to switch between um, different scenes quickly, efficiently, and it looks quite nice, right? So what we do here is like, this is our main scene, we're showing our gameplay, but now let's say we're back in lobby. And uh, while we're in lobby, we want to have a different setup. So we'll add a new scene. We'll just call it demo two. Okay. And again, we have, we should start with by adding our video capture device. And you'll notice they already have existing sources and this will be set up perfectly. You don't actually have to change anything other than to transform its size, uh, fit the screen. But again, we're in lobby now, so we're going to not focus so much on the gameplay and now shrink that down and provide ourselves with tons of space to add other things, right? So if we wanted to, uh, I don't know, add some text, hit add source, yep, sure. Uh, we can, I don't know, whatever we want it to say. My Twitter handle is, oops, rocker fraggle. Right? I don't know. And maybe in here you have your Insta, Insta, and your Facebook, and all your other social networks, your uh, Twitch, whatever. All right, you hit done. And you can move this over here. And so now people have a large viewing space to see whatever information you want to display to them. Maybe in this space here, you've created an area for a much larger webcam view. So now, now everyone who's watching you can see you a bit better than when you were in the main screen where it was small and truncated. I don't know, maybe even here you have an image of some sort, all right? But the idea here is to allow you to display different types of information depending on where you are in your stream. So we could have, we could go from here while I'm in gameplay to here while I'm waiting in lobby. And maybe I even have another one called be right back, you know, and I click on this one and all this one is is a stationary image uh, that says be right back. I don't think I have one um, personally, uh, but, you know, let's just pretend then uh, instead we just like, you know, let's just, no, we want to add a new source because we don't want that one. And we just say, be right back. All right. Um, and so in the in this case, you know, maybe you've stepped away from your webcam. You're not there. Uh, you just want to let people know you'll be right back. So now you have a scene that tells people I'll be right back. Right. So we can go from gameplay to lobby to be right back quite quickly. And then when you switch games, you'll have your collections made for whatever game you're playing. That way you don't have to have like a generic one that you hope overlays perfectly. Uh, and what I mean by overlays perfectly is in the case of a game like, uh, like Smash Bros, you have down here your percentage bars and your stock counts, and you obviously don't want to cover those. Um, whereas in a game like Call of Duty, maybe this area is not so important. And so you can put stuff down there, right? And so... You always just want to make sure that you have uh, scene collections set up for different types of scenes that you plan or different types of games you plan on playing or uh, different types of captures. Anyways, guys, that should be absolutely everything. Uh, I hope that you've enjoyed this video. I hope that it helped you out a little bit more. Uh, I know some of you are having some concerns or some complaints, not complaints, sorry, but uh, some problems with the, the last video. And so hopefully this is solved absolutely everything for everybody. All right, guys, if you like this video, uh, please like it. Uh, feel free to subscribe to my YouTube uh, account uh, where I post all my highlights. And if you want to actually watch me play, uh, feel free to follow me on uh, Twitch at, uh, and my name's Fraggle Rocker on there as well. I play a ton of Smash Bros, a little bit of Street Fighter, a ton of Call of Duty, basically anything competitive I can get my hands on, League of Legends, whatever, I absolutely love playing. So uh, till next time, guys, I hope that your uh, day goes well, and I hope that you're, I hope to see you on Twitch streaming away soon. All right, guys, bye.